Hello, Michael Denon here. Um, I just wanted to share a couple quick thoughts in video format on assessment as we switch over to remote teaching. Um, many of you received my email on this and I have, we have a text document and some help on our support pages, but I thought a brief video discussing it wouldn't hurt. And what, the reason I wanted to do this is we don't often think critically about our grading scheme or assessment design because at some point in our career we designed it, it works very well and then we can get, just keep using it. And as you switch to remote teaching for this quarter, I think particularly those of us at UCs and other schools in the quarter system, we're going to face some unique challenges. When I look around the country, semester systems that are doing this are in an interesting place. They've had a large chunk of the semester under standard assessment, and they're trying to figure out what to do as they finish a semester where they already have a body of work. In the quarter system, we're starting off fresh, and it really does require a little bit of thought up front. And I think when we think about assessment, we don't always recognize that we use grades in our courses really for at least three different things and maybe more. First, we actually use them for motivating our students. Many of us assign points to things throughout the quarter and we assign them based on the fact that we really feel students need to do these to be successful. They're much more a formative assessment. Uh, they're really something students need to do to learn we give them the points and we include them in the grade and it helps serve as a backup, a secondary purpose that when we have the high stakes assessment at the end to see did they really learn something, they have this kind of cushion to fall back on of points that they've earned for doing the things we think are important. So these motivation points sometimes even serve these dual roles. The second thing we have is what I would call the really high stakes assessment or the critical assessments, the ones that we're really looking at, did the students master what we wanted them to see? Maybe it's one or two key papers in your course, maybe it's one or two key exams. And these are the assessments that are really testing the knowledge. And they often occur at the end of the quarter or maybe one in the middle, one at the end. Um, depending on our design, we may have a balance. These may not be quite as obvious. Maybe we're using assessments throughout the quarter that are both the motivation and the actual assessment and then the final exam plays a slightly bigger role but not an overwhelming role. There's all sorts of different ways you can tweak this but you have both of these. The third piece that we often use is assessments that are designed to help prevent academic dishonesty. What do I mean by that? Well, in many of our courses we have a big final exam in person with a lot of proctoring multiple versions of the exam, uh, lots of proctors, we check IDs, seating charts, all of this designed to minimize the opportunities and chances for students to cheat and maximize our possibility of catching the students who are cheating. There's other ways to design around academic integrity, but that's the most common in exam formats. When it comes to papers, we're using Turnitin.com and other mechanisms to catch plagiarism, which is the main concern. Now, in a fully remote learning environment, perhaps the one that suffers the most is the academic integrity modes. Because in dealing with academic integrity, proctoring changes significantly. Um, and there's a lot of issues and concerns around remote proctoring that you're going to need to think about and only you can really make those decisions. And I encourage you to look at our materials on that. But there's another route you can go. I encourage faculty to think about the idea of assessment from the perspective that a number of people are exploring. And I would point maybe to Eric Mazur um, at the Harvard Physics Department um, and some of our faculty who are looking at things really carefully and thoughtfully around fully open exams, group exams, other type of mechanisms. What's the philosophy behind this? Well, let's face it, academic courses are kind of a unique um, point in time where we expect you to do your work isolated from all information. The rest of your career, you have access to the internet, people, books, whatever you need to solve the problem at hand. It's very rare that you're forced to do it in isolation. So perhaps this is a moment in time to explore or look at ways in your course that you can assess differently and change the metric and how much academic integrity comes in because what you're assessing is not just have they learned certain mastered content on their own, but how effectively can they marshal that content to answer particularly hard and challenging problems or questions. Likewise, on the writing side, 
maybe this is a time to consider exploring that balance between motivation and assessment. We, don't, we often talk about students learning from their mistakes, but in most of our grading schemes, the mistakes stay with the student the whole quarter. There's no real way to get rid of them. Now, many of us drop a lowest score or allow students to miss one assignment, so there's a little bit of flexibility on the edges. But maybe this is a time to really consider how can we maximize that experience for students where there are points given and they learn what they're doing and then maybe, maybe it's the best paper that gets graded, not all the papers. And they get to choose which they think represents their best work. Um, now, the other possibility is also we have to look closely at motivation. And this is a simpler one. We, we do a lot of grading for motivation. Often this is around engagement. Are they engaged during class? Are they interacting with students? Are they even showing up to class? And in this remote world, we just have to face the reality that there can be technical challenges. Our students are in very different time zones. We do want to maximize that engagement, but we want to think creatively about how do we count those points so they don't hurt the students who run into issues. And so we're not constantly having to judge, was that a valid tech mistake or not? So just a few suggestions I've seen on the internet, and you have to pick the ones that match your course, your goals, and your philosophy. Um, one thing I've seen is give every quiz twice, because if students have two chances at every one, um, the one where the tech fails is the one that doesn't count. And then you don't have to decide, did the tech really fail or not when they come to you. Um, another possibility is you, you, have, you do have points for engagement and the synchronous work, but you design a grading scheme where it's an either or. If they do it, it's great, it's in the grading scheme. If they can't do it, you count the grade a different way and it doesn't hurt them for missing it. These are just thoughts and suggestions. There's probably a large number of ways you can do this. And you certainly have more than enough to be working on right now, just getting your course to remote, that you probably don't want to make radical changes to how you grade and assess. However, a little bit of thought up front about these ideas and how they work can save a lot of emails and stress during the quarter when what you've designed and perfected in the face-to-face -face world doesn't quite align with the remote world. And it's those small misalignments that can just lead to a lot of work and stress down the road. So I really encourage you to think about these ideas. Some of these may resonate with you. Some of them may not. That's not the point. It's not to follow these suggestions. It's just to give you directions for thinking about assessment. Thank you.